Hi everybody and welcome to Studying the Masters. I am your host Alicia Diane. If you are coming from um, meetup.com, then welcome. If you're just passing through or a regular subscriber on the YouTube channel, then thank you for coming aboard. This is a pretty new series. This is just the fourth one we're going to be studying today. Chuck Jones, he's one of my favorites and probably one of your favorites too, whether you know his name or not. He's the director of many, many, many um, hundreds of the Looney Tunes series for Warner Brothers. And he just created tons of shorts that have been incredibly influential not only to me, but to artists and um, cartoonists. Well, obviously cartoonists are artists, but you know what I mean. <laughs> to artists everywhere. So hopefully um, I can do him some sort of a justice and we're going to get started pretty soon here. So what I'm going to do now is open up a file. Let's see, I'm going to open up a file on Photoshop and pretty soon we're going to be heading over there. So if you'd like to draw along, you can. You can go ahead and um, grab a pencil or a pen, an ink pen, a micron, and a sketchbook. And you can go ahead and draw along with me. I didn't want to start later. I wanted to make sure that I was on time. So I didn't pull in the images yet, but we'll, I'll show you where I'm getting the references from. I'm probably going to get them from Google today because I didn't see a whole lot on the... Um, On the Live Lily, um, there were some, but it was a little bit less clear. So I wanted to um, pull in some that I saw from Google, which were really good references, really good um, loose hand drawings that I liked. And hopefully we can bring most of them in from, that, from there. We'll do some 10 minute poses. And let's see, where am I going? I'm trying to find my file now where I have my. Um, have it here. That's not it. <laughs> here it should be right here. There it is. Okay. So I'm gonna pull you in actually. Let's see. Oh, I should pull you in first to IMDB. I wanted to show you guys um, what I was looking at before. And I also was watching a couple of videos too about Chuck Jones and it's pretty neat just to get a little bit of insight. But I'm gonna open up my Internet Explorer, and you'll see here, this is actually um, Chuck Jones here on the IMDb website. And if you've never been to imdb.com, IMDb it's the Internet Movie Database. That's what the words stand for. And you can pretty much look up any movie or television show that's been released to the public, and they're going to give you lots of information. You can look up actors, directors, producers, artists and it will show you all of their work and um, it's a great resource to know about uh, especially if you're interested in movies so these are some of the shorts that he did just, just tons of shorts and you'll see there's a long list a lot of these are Looney Tunes short a lot of them were through the 30s through the late 30s you see all of these 52 51 40 38 lots in 38 lots in 37 lots in 36 so these were really, really um, early animation stuff. These are things that he was doing, you know, in the 30s, which is like so early in animation, you know. Snow White, yeah, the first um, full length animated feature with color and sound and everything um, came out in the late 30s also. So it's like, just to give you a little bit of idea of how long ago this was, this is a long time ago. I don't know if I can click on any of these and it will show me the images from these. But it'll barely, you see like even the black and white. Just so many, like look how, <laughs> It's really great. So anyway, when you have time to go and look through those, you can look through some of those. I'm going to switch back to my, let's see, if I can find my um, Photoshop window. Oh, switch it over. See Photoshop, and I'm going to open up this. I'm going to save it as a different file. Let's see. Okay. I'm gonna actually to go over this because I think I'm getting the 
references from different places now, so I'm just going to wipe that out so I can put in. Okay. And if you're just joining us, then welcome. You can go ahead and grab a pencil or a pen. We didn't start drawing yet. We're going to be drawing here in a second. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And I have some new subscribers, so if you are new um, to the channel, then welcome. We also have some new members at the Meetup group. If you are coming from Meetup, then welcome. I'm so happy that you are here. Let me rest around this game here. And if you guys were ever interested in some um, Photoshop tutorials, we can definitely go through that also as well. So, Okay, so let me see if I can find. I'm gonna pull in some some references. One, pull in. Oh wow, these are really good. I was also watching this little um, clip earlier about um, the way that he drew bugs, and it's pretty neat. It was a, it's a, I'll add a link to um, to that in a little bit because that was really a cool resource. Oh, that's so cute. I don't know if we'll get to all these, but these are really great. All right, let me make my window bigger. You can see what we're doing as we're doing it. I have 11 images. I don't think we'll get to all of those, but it would be nice. And so far, I just got these from Google. Some of these might not be the greatest um, as far as like the quality of the image. There are some various Chuck Jones galleries around. If you guys ever get the chance, there's what there's two for sure that I know of. Um, so there's a, just several in California. There's one not too far, I think. Um, a little bit, I'm not sure. I want to say, and then it's not right, but. There are a couple of different Chuck Jones galleries in California, and there's one in New Mexico. So you can look up Chuck Jones galleries, and you'll actually be able to see. It's really neat. I went to the one in Santa Fe a few years ago, and um, they just have like original stills. Um, because he not only was a director on these um, shorts, he designed many of the characters, um, including Bugs Bunny, and really led the whole team as far as like the style of the animation and the way the stories were told and he really had a huge um responsibility there doing um the looney tunes shorts so it wasn't just um you might think of a director now it's just telling people what to do <laughs> and sometimes it is but that's definitely not what chuck Jones was doing he did a lot of the drawing he did a lot of the animating the designing as well as the storytelling and so um it was really i mean back in the earliest days of animation it was a lot more than um because it was so early on there really weren't as many um what is it it there weren't as many job titles as there are now because they were all just figuring it out as they went you know so it was no official, okay, well, this guy is the lead, and this guy's going to do that, and this guy's going to do that. It was a little bit different. It didn't work the same way that it does now, just because um, everyone was still coming into understanding of the process and what was going to, what people were going to be needed to do what. So let me see here. Move that over. Just have a few left. Sorry. <laughs> taking a few minutes, but we are on our way 
Hmm. Kind of neat editing photos. So we'll get to as many as we can. Let me see. Maybe I should do five minute poses so we have a little bit more time. Maybe I'll do some five minute poses. I just really would like to do more of them. So we'll see. You know, how about we do five minute poses and then whichever one we like the most will come back and we'll spend more time on. I think that makes sense. Let's just do it that way. Or all right, so now we have all of our imagery size and we're going to start drawing. So let me grab the timer. Okay, really wanted to do um, 10 minute poses on all of them, but I'm like, really going to have some. A lot of time to be able to do that but i think this will work so we'll try this out this time if we like it better with 10 minutes and you guys can comment and let me know and next time we'll just do only 10 minute drawings but let's see how this goes i'm gonna grab my pen and i'm gonna grab my drawing tool and i just used this little crayon brush it's a preset brush it comes in photoshop it's called um Erodible round. Sometimes it's called crayon. I don't know. Sometimes it's just called round watercolor. That's what it's supposed to be, round watercolor. Okay, we'll, we'll do it like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a timer for five minutes. My color that I have to use. And start. I'm going to start with Elmer because he just feels a little bit more like he's. And I did start drawing already today. Uh, I'd like to do some warm-ups. I really came really close to not um, doing any figure drawing yesterday. It was like the end of the day, and I was super tired. And I was like, I am not, I'm not going to do this, but I had in my mind already. I'm like, I need to get at least a couple of figure drawings done. So I did it but like really at the last minute before I went to sleep, and I didn't want to do that today. I wanted to make sure that I was fresh and had some at least a little bit of practice drawing before we got into these because you know Chuck Jones is the real deal. <laughs> I didn't want to come in here bare. So I did some bigger drawings earlier today. Did about 30 poses. And figure drawing for me just helps me to not only to sharpen and feel like more fresh, but also feel like it's a good warm-up. And also, like, I feel more ready to do harder things. <laughs> really want to even, before I start getting into too many details, because this is such a short pose, I'd like to even start out. And what I learned from the little bit that I watched earlier was that they do the circle and the little pear-shaped body, and they figure out where the ears are going to be from the nose, which they draw first, and then the eyes are on the same plane as the nose. I might not be doing it justice, but I'm trying my best to figure this out. Think about those cheeks. I love like the kind of smirkiness of Bugs' face here. I just think it's really, and even look at the detail in the fingers. That's really cool. Just like flirting with him. Ladybugs. <laughs> I 
And so this is still considered speed drawing in a sense because I'm just trying to get everything, like all of the bare stuff in the image as fast as possible. And even though I would come back and you know, go into detail, I still want to get as much information on the page as possible before I even get started with adding details and stuff. But I do want to think about where the planes are coming from. Help me figure out everything else. And I'm actually um, got some check tunes going on in the background. <laughs> There's a couple of shorts on YouTube if you guys want to check it out later at some point. And if you have never seen a Looney Tune short, Gosh, feel horrible for <laughs> you. Or no more, I should say, I, I don't think anyone that's interested in animation could have never not seen a Chuck Jones short before. Like you saw that list I showed you, he did the, the, the majority. I don't want to say all because I, I don't know that, but he did the majority of the shorts that were produced um, for Warner Brothers. And it's just, a, wow, it's just a really incredible feat. I can't imagine being a director on that many shows, but he just had this thing for it, and especially because animation was so new. I could imagine that had to play into it somehow. I'm trying to see and everything, which I don't really need to do, but I'm just kind of intrigued by it. Okay, so we're going to start our next one. I'm going to do this one for five minutes also. This one was really cool. <laughs> it's like the disheveled cat, but it, the way it's done is like, it's really awesome. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to just try and pick them apart. Somehow, figure out his body shape. Probably I'm drawing him too big. I feel like I'm drawing too big. I need to have some space. I don't know how much time Chuck actually spent observing animals, but I gotta imagine it had to be a lot. Especially um you guys have ever seen we'll get to it too. The shorts with um Mark Anthony, which is the the big bulldog. I love those. He re I, I mean, he's this big bulldog that's really angry sometimes, but he can be so gentle <laughs> and so kind. Uh, he just is trying his best. But it, it is very much feels like, you know, believable as a dog. And one of the things that I was um, listening to earlier when I was trying to get at least a little bit of more refresher of a, in a information session, I guess you could say, of Chuck Jones and, you know, what he did and things like that, so I could be, you know, more able to talk about him here. Um, one of the things I learned about him was um, he read a lot of books. He read tons of books, and he said, like, you know, how are you going to put something on the page and draw it if you don't have any, like, if you don't have any resources of of things in your mind. It's like all of these things have to come from your imagination, but you have to put things into your imagination to get them back out. And that made a lot of sense to me. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me now. And it's true. I feel like the more um, I'm just able to get, able to, able to see and be around other artists and be around art and to actually you know, put in a time to read, which doesn't always <laughs> come as a natural hobby to me. Um, it's something I have to kind of you know, push myself to do. But definitely after I read something and gotten some some new insights, it's like definitely gonna help. And I think it shows up in the drawings. Now I there's parts of this are looking really clumsy. So like a drawing like this 
but I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out as I'm doing it. I would have to come back and spend a bunch of time on it. Definitely wouldn't be able to get a real likeness to it in five minutes. This is something, this is like, this was Chuck's style. This this cat right here, even though it's really disheveled, and it's still a rough drawing. Um, even Chuck's is a really rough drawing, but still, it, it was, this, I think, is really representative of his personal style. And as part of animation, too, though, it's just being able to adapt to styles of other people. I'm going to try and at least change a couple of things before we move on. Hopefully, I'll have a little bit of time to. I'm trying to figure out where everything is coming from as I'm going. Probably would have been helpful if we draw some <laughs> some actual Chuck Jones drawings before we started, but wow. Like the more I'm like doing these um studying the artist series, the more I'm realizing these guys, you know, their stuff is not just simple stuff to draw. It's it's real, real stuff. <laughs> I mean obviously, right? But you don't even feel it really until you start doing the drawing and then it's like, oh well, okay. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> But I think that adds a whole new level of appreciation. It's like I'm learning something about this type of art style that I just didn't even realize before. And maybe, you know, in the future coming up, I'll have to spend at least several weeks on each of these guys. Because there's no way to really get it all in an hour or two. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. That one was hard. <laughs> that one wasn't easy. All right. Well, I think it helps me a little bit to clear it out with the second line. Just a little bit. All right. Here we go. Big, big mama. Hopefully, I can do her justice. This was one of my favorite shorts when I was growing up. <laughs> you can start. I think it was, I think it's probably one of the most famous. It has to be of all the, the different Looney Tunes. That, that horse is just so unforgettable, I think. <laughs> how can you not, like, how can it not <laughs> influence you in some way? It's just an amazing design, really. So that. Oh, man. I have to make that. Now you're seeing me where I mess up. <laughs> yes, I mess up lots of stuff. But I think we all do. That's the good news. <laughs> You'll never be the only one that messes up. That's for sure. All right, I think I'm just, it's just a really a big marshmallow, like he's dealing here with this character. It's just a big cloud of the thing. That's a But it still has a lot of knowledge in it. Look at it, like, if you look at this, you can totally see a three-dimensional object. Even though it's just a 2D um, rough line drawing, you can still see the knowledge of the anatomy, and you probably didn't notice this when you're watching it, you know, as a kid. But when you look back at it now, you have to know a little bit about a horse to draw something that's just so even um, abstracted as this. I don't even want to say abstracted, but um, pushed is a better word. And it still has so much charm. It just has this, like, kind of doughy eye, kind of like a... I don't want to say like 
the horse is just seems like out of touch with all reality. <laughs> That's how I see the horse. The horse is just like I'm just doing my job, just riding along, and there's something on my back. <laughs> And bugs, it's just like greatly posed elegantly. Oh yeah, the ears aren't even showing. That's right. He was he was trying to um if you remember this short, he was trying to pose as a woman, which I don't understand <laughs> how Elmer um didn't realize that it was bugs with a you know the whiskers and all, but <laughs> apparently just putting on a, a hat and a outfit really fooled um Elmer into believing that this was a human. This is the one where they see it's a really like a um opera. It's so good, it's so it so detailed. I think everyone who wants to do animation or cartooning should watch this short if they haven't seen it. I'm just trying to figure out what I can include to tell the story. You know, we have a short period of time. I definitely would like to come back on this one and do it for a full 10 minutes. This is a nice one. And I keep on, um, feels like I keep on putting the head not giving um, the neck enough room and somebody's into some kind of trouble with that. Yeah. If you haven't um, seen, well actually, you know what, I'm going to allow you guys if you have a favorite um, Looney Tune short that really impacted you, um, what was it? Or what was your favorite um, character? There has to be one, at least. There has to be, I believe there has to be one. You can't not have a favorite Looney Tunes short. Everyone has one. Or character, and or character. So if you have one, please um, let me know in the comments, which one was your favorite? Which one was the one that impacted you? Or did Chuck Jones have an influence on you? Get on me. All right, that's the timer. Yeah, we definitely need more challenges. I would love to come back to this one. Second one. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Oh, there's Mark Anthony. So let's start. He was really protective, <laughs> really protective, but also really uh, gentle at the same time. Oh, and gentle. Like that. And love what they did with the, um, the blurred motion. That's pretty. Make this a little bit more dramatic with his foot pose. And it's almost like you can just go right back into the cartoon as soon as you see some of these still frames. Like, frames you right in there. That's for me. And like, you can look like this, you can still see like the knowledge of even human anatomy here. Like, with this big arm and big shoulder. So if you've ever thought that figure drawing doesn't matter for cartoons, <laughs> I'm gonna lay it on thick again. It really does. Um, a really good book that I've read before, and I still keep it in my little virtual. Um, library is um, 
And you might have this already. If you're interested in animation, you might already have this book. So you'll be able to go back to it easily. And that one is called um, The Animator's Survival Kit. And it's written by Richard Williams, and he's a really good um, resource. He's not the greatest person ever. <laughs> I had a chance to meet him. Well, not really meet him, but um, they would speak at my school years ago. But it was um, really kind of um, like many artists that get good, get a little bit of an ego. And he was really um, talking down about another artist that he worked with and not realizing that um, many of us students. <laughs> knew who that other artist was he was talking about and he was actually a mentor to us. So um, Richard Williams lost a lot of points with me and several other um, of my peers. But that said, he was still a genius and is a genius and a great um, animator. And that book is really good. And one of the things he talks about, even though I got off track there, <laughs> got a little bit off track, but I mean, bottom line is, I really wanted to um, play that he does. Um, one of the core things he talks about before he even gets into animation is figure drawing and how he went out to Europe and studied and he really wanted to become a good artist and wanted to learn traditional ways of art and drawing and really studied hard and then came back to the States and started doing animation um, again, but with a different set of eyes. Because he worked at Disney very young, he worked, he, Apparently, went up to Disney Studios as like a 10 or 12 year old and, um, you know, told them that he wanted to <laughs> work with them. And he said, Kid, keep going, you know, keep going and come back to us when you're growing up. And then that's what he did. But of course, you know, as everyone knows, like there was a dry period and animation and they had to let go of a lot of people and a lot of people left. And I think he was just one of the people that left and he went to study traditional art. But um, that's one of the things he talks about is really, you know, learning how to be an artist before you just learn how to be an animator. And I think that's pretty important. That was a long, like, um, detour. <laughs> I just wanted to, like, briefly mention Richard Williams, and then I brought up all this stuff. Hey, we can actually do um, Richard Williams here as a studying the masters. He would be a great, um, a great one, because even though he said some things I didn't agree with, I still think he's great. And we'll also have to do the artist that he was talking about, which I won't mention now, but we'll do him too because he's awesome as well. And what else? It's got to be difficult, though. I imagine it's got to be difficult. Um, I want to add also as a little side disclaimer. Um, if you don't know who Richard Williams is, he is uh, the creator of Wolf Frame Roger Rabbit, and he designed Roger Rabbit. He did a lot of the animation himself. Um, he did it all on ones. If you're familiar with animation, um, you'll know that doing once takes twice the time, <laughs> so it's no easy feat. And I go ahead and switch to our next page. But he was the designer of Who Frame Roger Rabbit, and I'm going to start the timer right now. So I got distracted by the cartoon that's actually on right now. Oh, these are great. These are awesome. <laughs> oh, I love these. I love that crooked smile. Chuck Jones also did um, The Grinch. You might recognize his style in that. He also um, directed um, the um, St. Andrew for Christmas. <laughs> the Grinch was still Christmas. Um, I'm going to save this. But um, you can see that style. All right, I love that mouth that he did. I'm actually going to go ahead and start with that one, I think. Let's go ahead and start. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. I'm talking about Richard Williams. <laughs> but, you know, not to, you know, be down on him because he, he went through a lot of stuff, too, and he actually had um, the rights taken for some films that he did and spent a lot of time on. So he, he had it rough a lot of times, and he didn't 
get the credit and the, really the what he earned from all of his work because he was a maniac with animation. He was really he was so obsessed with it that he spent a lot, a lot of time doing it. And he had a lot of his rights pretty much taken from him by a um, studio who didn't want to fund his <laughs> insanely um, expensive ideas. <laughs> so I, you know, I say one thing about Richard Williams, but I still want to give him the credit for his thirst because he is really a legend. And we will move on from that subject because that's really not what this is about. <laughs> oh gosh, whenever I, I start talking on here, I just tend to like sort of unleash, I guess, all of my thoughts <laughs> and things that I've learned and and discussed and read about about animation because I think this is like really the only place that I'm one of the only places everywhere else too where I do like um, to meet up groups for drawing and things like that. But um, it's really talking to you guys who are interested in art. That's what we're telling really able to really geek out about because <laughs> it's really much what I'm doing. I'm just geeking out about these other artists that I think are cool and have inspired me. Oh gosh. Speaking of like being a jerk with art, <laughs> it's easy to fall in that trap. And it's easy because a lot of people get who are tend to become really, you know, skilled at it. And I want to warn you, even if this is like before or after you, you feel like really confident in it, it's something that I've noticed along the way and something that I've become more and more aware of as I, you know, trying to not be in that realm. Because I think that people get there and they don't notice that it's a lot of um, putting a lot of work in and not feeling recognized or maybe get recognized overly and then you just, you know, get really um, egotistical about, you know, the skill that really, it's a gift to us. It's a gift from from sources that we have nothing to do with. We, we nurture it, we nurture that skill, and we nurture our ability, but we didn't have any control over what was going to, you know, spark us as a child or whatever to make us want to draw. We don't have control over that. So I just want to put that out there that it's really important to realize that early on. And I do want to say that um, just be careful. Just um, always approach situations should probably do this on a separate layer. Um, no, we put on a separate layer. <laughs> Let's just go ahead, because I know that I always regret it when I don't put another line on a separate layer. What was I saying? Oh yeah, about getting um an ego. It's something that we're all in danger of if you're trying to become good at, at being an artist. Because it's easy to get a lot of compliments from a lot of people who might not even know anything really about drawing or maybe people that do. And then it's even easier to get like um, really caught up in thinking that, you know, you are this skill set or you are this thing that you do when really you're not. It's just a part of what you do and it's a part of who you are, but it's not you. And I think it's important to recognize that and to not let it get out of hand or not become obsessed with it just let it be something that's fun and something that's enjoyable for you and for everyone you share it with but not to become consumed by it in any way because or think that you are better than anyone because you can draw well or because you can draw better than anybody or whatever the case may be. I think that's incredibly important. I definitely noticed times that I've been, like moments where I've gone through where um, it might be completely um, 
different now, but like moments where I noticed where I wasn't being kind um, or, or thinking that I knew more. I remember times like that it just sucks to think about because like nobody wants to like remember that aspect. But I remember times like that where I've done that, and it's not good for anyone because <laughs> we all can lose our drawing ability <laughs> and we all can gain it. So someone you think you might can know a little bit more than now might come around in a year or two and apparently surpass you, you never know. It happens. And I'm going to go ahead and this one is really blurry. I wonder if this one even sees more for the line. This one's pretty cool. I'm going to put that on the back part, I think. Hmm. That's a nice one. And I'm going to set the timer. And let's start. Any part of um, yeah, I want to figure out what his body's going to be doing. I think this is, where's this from? It's definitely a Robin Hood type of a short. I think I remember, I remember seeing it, but like a long time ago. One thing that um, people might ask, um, which is, I think, a pretty common question, was like, was Warner Brothers ripping off Disney? <laughs> Were they really, um, you know, ripping them off? You know, Disney came out earlier, and there were other studios too. There's Paramount and some other, Fleischer, I think, that were doing some other things. But some people might wonder, you know, especially if you're not overly familiar with um, either, of, either of the shorts from the 30s, 40s, 50s. And the answer is, yes and no. <laughs> the answer is yes, Disney did come out um, earlier with some of the shorts and things like that. But really, um, the essence of Warner Brothers cartoons is really an anti-Disney. <laughs> And it's like the same thing that you'll see now. I mean, Disney is kind of like the granddaddy of like, you know, American animation. You know what I mean? It's, it really is. But also, when these guys came out, they were doing things that Disney would not even, you know, imagine doing. They were really political, they were really edgy. They were really, you know, flying off the board and just doing different, a different type of comedy. And so as both studios progressed, I think they both fed off of each other and they both learned from each other and they both really competed in a healthy way, you know, with their animation. So I think it's tough, you know, you can't really say whether it's like that because I don't think it's that way at all. I think it's a whole other thing, kind of like what happens now in animation is just, you know, companies will feed off of each other and one will do another thing and it totally too depends on who's in charge at the time. You know, because some, I think, studios definitely just do sort of a, what is it, like a Xerox copy of what another studio is doing. But a lot of the times you'll see that they're just feeding off of each other. And it's kind of like this whole little world where everyone's kind of doing their own thing, but they're seeing what you're doing. It's just like being in art school, too. It's like you're going to see what your classmates are doing, and you're going to try and I'll do them, and that happens within one studio too. Like you'll see what someone else is doing, and you'll try and surpass them, and they'll, they'll see your gags and laugh, and they'll try and do something too. So it's kind of like a more of a healthy competition. I don't think that Disney would have gotten to where they've gotten to 
without the competition of studios like Warner Brothers and vice versa. I don't think that um, these studios would have gotten to where they got into without the competition of, of Disney. So it's kind of like a they both fed each other type of thing. I think at least that's my theory. <laughs> that's my answer to a question that you didn't ask, but in case. I know some people that think it. I know I had different thoughts and I definitely was curious about how and why studios made the shows that they did. And I understand it a lot better now than I did years ago. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like I'm just too short to me. I'm going to bring it out a little bit more. I'll leave it there. I want to figure out where it's coming from, but I want it to just be coming out of here. This mandolin thing here. And look at this quirky, like these are guitar strings coming out, or mandolin strings. So look how quirky that is. Okay. I really want to spend even more time on these. They're a lot of fun. All right, here is our friend, Wiley called Coyote. If you've ever seen a real coyote, they look nothing like this, but <laughs> I think it's a really fun, um, fun concept. Let's go ahead and start. I really like this curve that comes out. Like, Oh man, my mind just wanders sometimes when I'm going. I totally forgot <laughs> about everything. That's kind of the point though, right? You see, that's all I need just to forget everything. I need someone to like come here and talk to me and make sure that I'm talking while I'm doing these. If you're interested, <laughs> all I do is I can't, like, I don't know. with eyes. I was getting a little, I was starting to do like some other type of eyes, like some vice bunny eyes or something. They're really close together because I think that this uni, uni vibral thing. I've never been to um, Six Flags, you can see these guys. <laughs> I don't know how much of uh, I don't even know if um, Chuck Jones ever got to keep any of the rights to any of these guys or anything like that. That'd be interesting to find out. I don't know what all of the legalities were. But I think for most of the shorts, he was. Um, he probably had partial life because I did see in some of the credits that he was also a producer. So. Let's see. Producers are the ones that own the rights. Let's see. Not crazy if this is drawing, but I'm still trying to figure out what it is about it. What is it? There's a lot of energy action in this pose. That's something that I could have added a little bit more to. I think I could definitely have pushed it 
the energy and really with the four chest. Yeah, I think that's where I missed it. Mm -hmm. I'm really seeing more of the energetic. This is like a, not a, just a, any type of a guy. This is a coyote that really puts his all into trying to get that roadrunner. And roadrunners are little tiny little creatures. If you've ever seen one in your life. I lived in New Mexico for years and there were just roadrunners everywhere. It was like all over the place over there. They're tiny little birds, but they're like they're really cool because they um they catch lizards and stuff. <laughs> and then to me that makes them cool. And I'm gonna try and add a little bit of wine on here. I can in the short time that we have. Not, not red. Get the right angle of the nose. It's frustrating when you can't get it right away. It's like uh, almost there, not quite there. Getting there. Anyway, let's go ahead with this next box pose. We've been flying through these. Feels like we did a lot. Yes, and this tiny timer. Do try and keep the advice up. Chuck Jones himself and he's drawing some of these. No, I still took some wrong thing. Push your body first. And then round head. Nose. And the eyes. In the same line. It looks really weird, like this looks like he has antennas or something like that. Yeah. I'm gonna trust that it'll all be okay. Yeah, I definitely think I like the 10 minute poses better. <laughs> Today was a little bit of a trial just to see what would happen. But I definitely think I like more time to figure these guys out. Really has a nice um, way of walking around. Let's really like get that tilt in the shoulders. That's important to see, to notice. A lot of human anatomy in this guy. Like, especially if you can feel it with those arms. Like so, 
Like, you understand it so much, and you just really play around with it. That's my tip. I think John it so much, you can just really get to the next level and bring your arm down a little bit. I just want to let that lead through. It doesn't look like much right now, but I'm starting to understand it. I'm always trying to keep up with the clothes on top. Okay, I really want to clean this up. I really think I can do it a lot better justice in what's showing up for me right now. with the red drawing with the red um pencil on the back. Felt a little bit better too seeing Jack Jones um, build a Bugs Bunny because his his like initial drawing when he just did like the circle and the little, you know, um, lines coming up, it looked weird too. <laughs> now, like, oh, everybody makes weird things. Especially like when you're just building it out. It tends to kind of look weird sometimes. If you kind of expect it to happen or like realize that that's just part of the progress, it will loosen you up a lot. You'll have to be afraid of the drawing. That's our time. A little bit more though. I'm too rushed. <laughs> You're not rushing me, I'm rushing myself. I'm trying to do more, but. I would like to figure this guy out more. Need more time. But it is what it is, right? For now. How many do we have left? Let's see. And definitely I could have gave him more headroom up here. Doesn't have nearly enough of them. And just take that out. Space. Not that much space. A little bit more. Bugging me. Bugs is bugging me. <laughs> Don't want to leave it like in this big confusion. Figure this thing out. Ooh. 
shorter than I thought this one. It's shorter. Like it comes up higher. So let me figure that out. It looks like this little lip is right here. Comes up here. Seems like a simple request, but it's not a simple. That's a little bit better. Especially with these characters that everybody knows, just having them off a little bit will be obvious because everyone has seen these guys thousands of times. And once you see what the error is like, mm, that's not right. And I can see it in myself. I'm like, that's not right. I want to make it perfect, but at least figure out what I'm doing. Partially, at least, to understand a bit better. Get it together. <laughs> I feel like I'm starting to understand a little bit better. That's good. Hopefully you are as well. But see, so just noticing like where you, where you um, lost it. Like there's just little tiny tweaks in there. Always, whenever you're. Drawing and you, and you, especially a good character or something that's recognizable, and you get in there and you realize that there's a work in there somewhere. Get that out of you. But once you just make the little changes, it makes a big, huge difference. It really does. And even though I just want to come here and make a couple of changes, it will make a big difference. Better. This eye is bigger. Did you catch that? Did you catch where I messed up? <laughs> if you did, good. Because, like, those are the things that you want to look for in your own drawings. You want to start to pick up in other people's drawings. You don't have to call it out for them and say, hey, you screwed up here. <laughs> But you can at least recognize it. Recognize it in any drawing will help you recognize it in your own, I think. If people are not that far off, that looks weird. The red, too, just makes it look really weird. Folks has a couple of whiskers coming out. And Chuck said that depending on their budget, um, they do two or three whiskers. And believe it or not, little things, simple things like whiskers, um, makes a big difference on the budget. Somebody's got to go in and put that line in over and over again on hundreds of drawings. <laughs> so that's why little things like that can make a big difference on your budget. Um, Ursula, the sea witch, only has six legs. And that was because of budget. They didn't want to have to draw eight legs over and over again. That would have took a lot longer. 
and would cost her a lot of money, a lot more money than doing her with six legs. That's just a little um, fun fact. <laughs> and we're gonna do this one. Oh, this one is really cute. I'm gonna go ahead and start a timer. We'll do another five minute pose. Hopefully I do some sort of a justice to check. Hopefully you've got some drawings out as well. And I'm gonna start a timer. These are cute. What's that? Huge um sort of rectangular shape head. It looks very fifties, very um that modern fifties sort of vibe. know how um, long Chuck, how old Chuck lived to be. Um, oh, I think I, I remember seeing it on IMDb. I think he was about um, maybe nine or so. He had a good little life. It's a good amount of time, I'd say. Of course, we don't like to be lucky enough to make it that far and beyond. This looks like it might even be from the Princess of Christmas. Uh, I keep saying that. Yeah, that's right. Princess of Christmas. I was getting it confused though in my head with um, my Bird Before Christmas. Really appealing little drawings. The design of it is really neat. Ponytail, also. <laughs> and even though she's a tiny little girl, she still has this little elegant um, hand pose about that. What we'll put it with a bit of a line. Helps get the point across. Excuse me, there's a hiccup. I want to get it across in the right way. Really smooth throughout line. I don't want to. Learning on um, how to do what it is we're trying to do.
some more on the other side of this. That one quickly. It's just so cute. <laughs> I have to stop drawing it because it's so cute. We're almost through here. Might as well follow it out. This will be the end. For the final um, drawing, we'll finish doing that bugs on the horse. I think that would be a good. The last image I got is really pixelated, so I'm just going to leave that one. Um, just going to accept that it just that one just doesn't really work that well for what we're trying to do here. I'm trying to figure out if I did her arm too short or her skirt too long. It looks like I just made her skirt a little bit too long. With that, I'm going to save this and I'm going to go back to our, another layer. Get this one, but. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. And that one also. What do you think? Oh, that's really Oh, here it is. Okay, so we'll work on this for about another five minutes or so, and hopefully we'll get enough done that it looks moderately finished. Okay, <laughs> okay so let's save it, and I'm going to start a timer for another five minutes. Hopefully that's enough, and we will see. So let's go. I want to get a, you know, a little bit more information in before I start going in with the um, darker line. I a little bit more. Make sure that I have everything I need, all of the supports I need before I go into that more finished type of line drawing. Take These are definitely more sultry than I initially do them. Little sultry eyes. Let's see what else I can figure out. in there. And it looks like the dress is pretty simplified, which is a good thing. Okay, let's see. 
Refine your organic type. All right, I think we're ready to start going into the clean line, so let's go ahead and do that. You want to get the detail on that horse? Keep going through and try and figure that out. Let's see what else can we talk about. Well, we talked about the drawing the whole time. That's not fun. <laughs> um, let's see. Hmm. It's really, I don't know if I can talk about anything. Point in the drawing. Um, gosh. <laughs> I wonder if anyone has trivia questions. I'll have to like do like some trivia questions. What do people normally ask about? People normally ask about um, different types of programs and software. What else? My experience drawing types of animation. I think I talked about some of the things I talked about already. What can I give you that's be a little bit more helpful for you. Oh, I was thinking about this earlier. That's right. Um, one of the things that's going to help you to draw um, well and draw often is drawing things that you like. And it sounds like, yes, sorry about that. <laughs> but I realized, especially, um, I went to a workshop last Saturday with Ron Husband, and I was just talking to some of the other artists. Um, all of them were sketch artists who you know, like to draw and we're pursuing art as professional, pretty much. Um, I think everyone there was pursuing art on a professional level. And, um, but there were some people there that weren't necessarily sketch artists. There were some people that were um, 3D artists and were trying to find some ways to, um, to draw more and to get more practice in and things like that. And um, one of the ladies said to me, um, if I'm not interested in the subject matter, I just can't do it. I just I lose interest, I get bored, and I just won't draw. And I realized quickly how true that is for everyone. Um, I think we always have to be interested in our subject matter. And that's too why I draw things on here that I'm interested in, that things that I, you know, want to draw. I'm not here drawing like you know battleships or something that I have no interest in but I'm drawing things that I do have interest in directing it towards um, animation which hopefully is something that you're interested in also or else I don't know <laughs> if you would really want to watch this channel if you weren't interested in um in cartooning or animation or learning to draw or some other thing along those lines um but one of the things I realized is a lot of times People that are really beginning to draw um, are having trouble with it and because it still feels like it's something that's a chore and they'll try to find different ways to make it easier on themselves or which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think there's an easier way to go about it. <laughs> that's not taking the easy way out. And that is finding things that you are interested in, like really, really interested in. Like maybe it's um making comics for your friends or like really silly really rough comics even if you're drawing really silly really rough stuff you will get better um especially if you start to um take those silly comics and take them more seriously and, and spend more time on them um another thing that you can do is my track while i'm drawing here is um i have to the hair is hard for me to If you're interested in a certain TV show, you might want to draw the characters, or you might want to do something like you love 
animals. Like for my instance, I love animals, and so I draw the zoo a lot. But animals might not be your thing. Maybe your thing is um, the football games. <laughs> I doubt that. I haven't met too many people drawing that really are into sports that much. But just to say you are into football games, you might want to just watch it and have a sketchbook handy and just draw them. Draw the people in stands. You can um, caricature them if you want to. Um, have someone to be accountable to. If it's not yourself, if you won't be accountable to yourself and be really self-disciplined, you need someone who will keep you um, in check, really. Because if you can't keep your check yourself in check, if you're not at that stage yet, which it will come when, <laughs> whenever reality strikes and you're like, man, I really need to do this. I'll never, you know, I'll never get it any better. Um, so having someone that you can sketch with, um, even for me, even just um, being a part of meetup and drawing with other people, that it's it's to help other people, but it's also to help myself. Um, if I wasn't, if I didn't have all these things like planned and scheduled, I might not necessarily just do them on my own. I need to have a plan. So even if you don't have to be a meetup organizer, but if you just joined a group of people that are drawing and that are drawing things that you're interested in, like it could be drawing at the zoo or it could be drawing people in the city or in a skate park or at Walmart or wherever. Have something to draw that you like to draw. Just keep in mind, not jot it down, things that you enjoy or things that you enjoy doing or places you enjoy and start to draw them and also join a group and you can have some people that you can draw with. That way you'll have to draw. <laughs> you won't have a choice. You'll just have to go and do it. And you'll start to see after the course of a couple of months, like, whoa, it improves a lot. And that will happen, really. It will just happen. You won't even realize it right away. It will just happen. And that's kind of a really cool thing, is when you're just drawing regularly, and you're enjoying it, and you're just making it a part of your regular life and months pass and all of a sudden you're miles ahead of where you were before and that's what that's really how it takes place that's how you get better drawing there aren't any shortcuts you learn tips and advice but there's no shortcuts to learning how to be a good artist you just have to actually draw so the best way to do it is to do it during things that you like doing that way you won't feel like a chore that way you won't even notice that you're doing it. It'll just be something that you do. And you'll have fun. It shouldn't hurt. <laughs> Drawing shouldn't hurt. It does sometimes, I know, but it shouldn't. Most of the time. If you're not working on some discipline project that you have to get done by this deadline, all of your, um, your drawing for the point of skill building and connecting it should just, just make it a part of your regular life. Join a group and do it all the time. And then you won't even realize it, but you'll be getting better. And months down the line, you'll, you'll see how much farther you've gotten. And with that, <laughs> I think I'm going to so say um, say la vie to you all. But I think that was a good way to kind of um, to close. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. and being a part of studying the masters with me today. I had a great time drawing with you all. It was really fun. It was really exciting. Um, Jim Chuck Jones, he's amazing. And I hope that I, you know, was able to capture some of his essence, but I know that I felt um, really inspired and I feel like really um, motivated to do even more because I'm seeing like the little things in his designs that I didn't even, that I noticed before, but not on a, such an intimate level as drawing his stuff. So it was a really good experience for that. And I just want to thank you again for watching. And um, until next time, be grateful, live balanced, and be yourself. And have a great week. And I will see you here on Friday.